Now perhaps you would love to, like me, one day be able to stroll down the university campus here at Stockholm University eating a jävla kex for clock. Well, one of the perhaps most straightforward ways of achieving this goal is for you to apply as a study abroad student here at a Swedish university, like an Erasmus exchange with SU, for instance. Now, this can be a very scary prospect, though. Moving abroad to another country where you perhaps don't speak too much of the language, if any at all. Perhaps you don't know anyone here and you're scared that you won't make any friends in Sweden. So, this video is for those of you who have just moved here to study, or those of you who are thinking of moving to Sweden as a university student. We're going to discuss a couple of things about Sweden and about Swedish university culture that I hope will make your transition here a bit less scary. Moving abroad is definitely the best decision I've ever made in my life. And I mean, I have... <laughs> and I mean, I bought these glasses coming in at a close second. Now, why on earth should you listen to me? <laughs> well, if the penguins are not reason enough, here is my very brief academic history, yes. So I have studied at three different Swedish universities in Stockholm, Gothenburg and Uppsala University. And I've also done an exchange semester, exchange semester, exchange semester with Roehampton University in the UK. Roehampton University, by the way, which has a reputation of being the raunchiest in the whole of the UK. Mm. While I didn't contribute too much to that statistic other than perhaps lowering it slightly. I feel I have some knowledge on the topic of studying abroad, or at least the little knowledge I do have, I will now do my best to bestow upon your face. One could even call this video the ultimate guide to studying abroad in Sweden. I mean, you'd be so full of shit, but you know. But what should you expect from studying in Sweden? All right, when you first get here, I think you'll notice a couple of things about Swedish society in general that I think are good to know if you're thinking of moving here. So when you realize them, when you get here, it's too late. No, it's fine. Well, first of all, everyone here speaks English. Yay. So if you're worried of any sort of language barrier, just don't be, because if you can understand English well enough to follow along with this video, for instance, you will have no problem communicating with people in Sweden. This can actually be a bit of a problem if you do want to learn Swedish, because if you move to a country where very few people speak English, then you're kind of forced into the, you know, the deep end of the pool. So Sweden in that analogy is kind of the kids pool equivalent, where you can have a go at swimming or learning or speaking Swedish, but you will always have the knowledge of being able to stand on the bottom that is English. Um, analogies kind of falling apart. Swedish is also full of piss. No, goodness. I think you'll find as well that certain Swedish cultural norms, general cultural norms, kind of bleed into university culture as well. For instance, a bit of social awkwardness. I've heard people complain about this, that Swedes sometimes come across as a bit cold, for instance. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> so there's no language barrier, but I guess there can be some sort of social barrier. I suppose depending on where you're from and which social norms you are used to, um, but if you come from America, for instance, I think it's fair to say that generally Swedes are perhaps on the more reserved end of the spectrum. I mean, I've heard that people say the exact opposite of this as well, so fuck do I know. Choice of university, city or town. So I think those are a few sort of general things about Swedish society that are well worth keeping in mind if you are thinking of moving here. Strange phrase. And that is the same for all of Sweden, but what will make your study experience in Sweden different is your choice of university city. Mm. Because I found that life as a student, or student to leave as we call it here, um, is very different depending on where you end up in Sweden. For instance, in smaller cities, the university can be at the very heart of pretty much everything that goes on. So Uppsala, for instance, a very popular student city in Sweden, has a population of about 150,000 people. Uppsala University has 40,000 enrolled students. So you can imagine that, you know, going, just walking down the road on a Friday night, pretty much everyone you'll bump into will be a fellow student. And there are a bunch of student activities everywhere, but more on that in a second, yes. But in the bigger cities like Stockholm and Gothenburg, I think there is a sort of wider gap between student activities and other stuff that people do. <laughs> there are student bars here, obviously, but they're usually confined to the university area. And if you want to go out in Stockholm, you know, chances are that you will just go to a normal pub and bar that is not specifically catered to students. And I personally kind of enjoyed studying in Stockholm and Gothenburg a bit more than studying in Uppsala. Everyone I've talked to in Uppsala is think I'm nuts. So I wanted to give the perspective of someone who did get into the student life in Uppsala and who was actually the person who convinced me to move there and study in the first place. She's called Marlin and she's a dear friend of mine. Recently, I went to Uppsala with a quest of learning exactly why she thinks that Uppsala is such a great place to study. So what about like student life in Uppsala? 
the student nice. life is amazing <laughs> here in Uppsala. <laughs> keep That's happy, yeah. seriously why everyone should go here uh -huh. to study. Because I mean, I've met a lot of exchange students during my time here and everyone just loves it here and they mm. don't want to leave. It's kind of like you live in a bubble, you know, mm -hmm. when you're a student here. Because mm -hmm. they have this thing called the nations. They are basically like, I don't even know, maybe you could compare them to like fraternity houses or in in America. If you come here and you don't know anyone, mm. the nations are a really good way to like get to know other people. They all have pubs that are open in the evening. Mm. But even if you're not into like partying and drinking and stuff, the nations have like a lot of other activities like I think seriously there's something for everyone mm. in one of the nations like did you they, do like samba through Vedola? yeah so mm. I started playing samba mm. in one in uh, Vedola nation yeah. which was something that I never thought I would do and they have like photography clubs choirs I think all the nations have choirs yeah. choirs are a really big thing here board Same game stuff. clubs like you name it I think every nation has like an international um, committee that just really takes care of in the international students and they arrange activities for them. I just think Uppsala is the greatest university city mm -hmm. in the world because of the student life. It's just like you you make memories for life mm. I think especially if you come as an exchange student because I've been an exchange student it's a really difficult word to say. <laughs> as I said all of the exchange students I've met have had a really really good time here yeah. and they like don't want to leave because it's just very centered around the students and you can there's always something you can do mm. like every night one of the nations will have a club mm. like a, a night club that you can go to mm. they have lunches they have fika do you know about the swedish fika you need to know <laughs> that's, before a, you that's come. a video in itself yes <laughs> yeah. but i think yeah you should come to Uppsala and study it's the best thing ever it will be the best thing you ever do mm. in your life i think yeah what about the Swedish education system, Arvist? So the choice of city does make a big difference on your experience as a student in Sweden in general. But what about the actual education? <laughs> oh, well, never mind that. That's not interesting. But I guess there are some sort of structural things that are worth knowing as well before you uh, start studying here or if you're thinking of moving here. So in Sweden there is, for instance, no exam week. Yay! So no hectic period at the end of the semester where you have to cram in all of your exams at the same time. I don't know why that is a system in the UK or in the US, but uh, I mean obviously this will depend a bit on what you study as well, but generally uh, the exam structure is that you do a course, you have the exam and then you do the next course and so on. So it's a lot more uh, sort of spread out during the semester. Speaking of semesters, by the way, there are two. I only mentioned this because when I was really confused when I moved to the UK and noticed there are three. Apparently that's the case in a lot of countries. But yeah, there are two in Sweden, the Höst Termin and Vår Termin, so autumn and spring semester. So you do get a 10 week gap during the summer here. A lot of us have to uh, work summer jobs then. Even though the education is free in Sweden, for Swedish people, everyone here still has huge student loans. Not as egregious as in the US or UK though, goodness, but yeah. And speaking of that, what's the cost of living and studying in Sweden? Yeah, I want to save the sexiest of topics to last. Now I could go through all this, you know, applying for scholarships and tuition fees and all that boring crap, but let's get straight to the important bit, shall we? What's the cost of a night out in Sweden? Well, there are good and bad news, I feel. Uh, generally, Sweden is really expensive when it comes to going out drinking on a Friday night. Yes, indeed. I think a beer in Stockholm is generally about 60 kilnur or about five pounds or six and a half dollars, I think. You also get like a little less than an actual pint as well for whatever reason. I was really miffed about that when I came back from London. But the good news is that even though Sweden is really expensive, as a student in Sweden, you will get the cheapest experience, kind of. For one thing, student bars and pubs are usually the cheapest. You get the cheapest drinks and everything. You also get a lot of discounts on things, on travel, on restaurants, and student accommodation is usually the cheapest there is in any city. That said, even though you get the cheapest Swedish experience, it is still pretty expensive. I mean, if you come here from Norway or something, it's, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> then you'll probably find Sweden to be quite cheap. I mean, it all depends on where you're from. Almen sammanfattningsvis då. But at the end of the day, what really matters is not the money you spend, but the experiences you have and the 
friends you make. Yeah. Because that is priceless, everyone. Fuck yeah. Now, to be honest, this whole thing of moving abroad will probably be pretty scary sometimes. If you're not used to speaking English and having a conversation in English and you're a bit scared of that, uh, just remember that even though Swedes typically speak English rather well, we're also kind of scared of actually doing it. So, uh, you know, at least you're in it together, I suppose. And if you are a bit sort of introverted and not too comfortable in social interactions, I think that Swedish people are generally kind of mindful about that as well and careful not to get in people's faces too much and, you know, allowing you to have your own space. I think that's a big thing here, actually. So, uh, so that's good. And I found that when I moved abroad, when I was 19, I only had my sister to hang out with, even though my sister is lovely. This kind of filled me with energy to do as much stuff as possible and meet as many people as I could. I know this is kind of a cliche, but it really worked. It really was a very sort of motivating thing, being in a completely new place without knowing anyone, pretty much. So maybe once you get here, you will get the same kick of wanting to, you know, experience everything and get to know everyone. And I do think that living and studying abroad is a great thing and I really want to promote this as much as possible. Not just because I had a great time doing it, but I think, and let's get pretentious here, fuck yeah, I think it's great for humanity. <laughs> because if more people are, you know, get to know people from different cultures and make friends all over the world, I think that's a pretty sure way of making the world a bit better. Isn't that, isn't that right? Unless you move abroad and find that, oh goodness, everyone in Sweden is just horrible. Let's go to war with them. <laughs> but I have yet to meet anyone who's had that experience, so that's good. And even if you feel that way, you can at least have a Kix for Cloud once you have once you get here. I've I've eaten mine. I can't do a great outro with a Kix for Cloud. Mm. It wouldn't have been a great outro anyway, so that's fine. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you did like this video, perhaps you will enjoy these ones as well over here. I make more videos about Sweden and culture here and stuff. And thank you very much to Marlin for being lovely and being in this video. You make me want to be an international student in Uppsala. Oh. Great stuff. And if you do end up studying here, I do wish you the best and I hope you have a great time.